Here is why I think Korea is so much cooler, so much better to visit and live in than China. It's dusty again. My mask is out. And in addition to that, I've got a cold. So I'm gonna head over to the pharmacy and pick up some uh, NyQuil or... It's called something else here in Korea. And also I'm gonna pick up some masks from Ollie and Liam because the masks we have at home are too big. So I gotta get some baby size masks for them. Oh, the stuff in Korea is called TerraFlu. I think it's the exact same formula, it's the exact same product, but it's been rebranded in Korea with a different name. So we're gonna go into the pharmacy here and uh, get some of that stuff. And that concludes shopping for our pharmaceutical needs. Got the masks and I've got some uh, NyQuil slash TerraFlu. There is a day version and a night version. I find that these work very well, particularly before the cold actually sits in. Once it's in, you know, you're just sick. I don't know if it actually works anymore. But prior to the actual outbreak of the, the, the bacteria, I find that if you take drink one uh, at night, it, it helps. Maybe it's a placebo effect. I don't know. Anyway, to the topic at hand. This morning I watched a video posted by uh, Serpent, Serpent AZ, uh, who is one of the biggest uh, YouTubers in China. He's a South African dude, and he's been um, YouTubing about China for the past 14 years or so. Today his video was about uh, him getting attacked by some random drunk dude, which is very strange. and. Honestly, I've never seen happen in Korea. So, for those who don't know, Korea is a peninsula that over the centuries has been subjected to all kinds of um, ruling rules and uh, occupations. It was either by the Manchurians, uh, the Khans, the Mongolians, the Chinese, which were, I guess, the Manchurians slash Chinese. I'm not too familiar with the history but I know that they come from like Central Asia somewhere and then there were the Japanese who would invade Korea in one way or form most recently Chinese but yeah uh, most recently Japanese um, I guess any nation that conquered and occupied left bits and pieces of its philosophy and teachings and whatnot behind in any conquered nation and so it was with China with Korea Hi. <laughs> So it was with Korea, and uh, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to China in particular, China brought its Confucius philosophy, which stuck for a very, very long time. Surprisingly, the Shinto uh, religion didn't really take in in Korea. What did what did take were the cherry blossoms. Uh, all the cherry blossoms have been imported by Japan during their occup occupation. Uh, the Japanese planted all the cherry blossoms and once the Japanese left uh, from what I understand they even took their own railing system that was built here and then after <coughs> uh, Japan left they took their rails uh, their their rail system with them uh, but they left the cherry blossoms which is good but in terms of China Chinese influence Confucianism is what was left behind which is one of the, in my opinion, most archaic forms of philosophy and lifestyle as such. Uh, Confucianism um, carries on into very subtle uh, aspects of everyday life. But unlike China, Korea is slowly uh, getting rid of that 
aspect of its culture, as any developing country should, I think. That is not to say they need to abandon all of its roots and uh, belief systems, but some things have to be changed, because some things require change as any society progresses into a more developed and understanding society. Confucianism is a very masculine uh, focused lifestyle, philosophy. Men rule all, women are secondary, I guess. Men and women have their proper places and neither one of the sexes should step out of their roles. Clearly that does not fly very well in face of the uh, Western philosophy or just a you know, Western lifestyle, which arguably is a more balanced, more equally balanced one when it comes to men and women at least. So while Korea has been able to slowly shed some of its Confucianist um, baggage over the years, even since me coming here, China is clearly hanging on to it for dear life. And it doesn't help that uh, the country is ruled by a uh, plutocratic communist regime. There's nothing to, to be romanticized when it comes to, to communism. It's one of the most vile forms of, um, of government. If you've never lived in communism, um, you know, worshipping it or, or, or placing it on some kind of pedestal is, is ridiculous. Uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. The amount of brainwash that people are put through in such system is just staggering. And so are the Chinese. From what I see, like I've been watching Serban AZ for some time now, <clears throat> and while he tries to portray China in a very favorable light, because if he doesn't, he basically gets shut down. He will be out of out of business. The government will just shut him down for once. So he has to find the good and all the bad that's out there and make it look as such. Otherwise, his YouTube channel would be gone. He would be no more. But every on every step, whenever he points out anything bad, Chinese just jump on him and it's just ridiculous. So the story that he was uh, sharing with the crowd in this particular video was of a, uh, of a man, he happens to be black, I don't know if that's relevant or not, but uh, he ended up having, uh, he ended up being sentenced to a four year long prison time in China, because in China, actually most Asian countries as well, there is this idea of saving face, but it seems like in China it's pushed into the limits of ridiculousness. The same ideology applies here in Korea and Japan, the saving of face, but I've never encountered anything as preposterous as, uh, of a story of, as what he as what he just talks about. So, so the story of this man was that he came to China to, to teach sports and since uh, uh, part of teaching sports is also teaching English, that's what he did as well. He went into a bar and a couple of guys with some connections apparently asked him to join their table uh, and wanted him to drink with them and he refused because I guess he didn't want to hang out with them and that caused them to lose face which to make lo a long story short which ended up with him being harassed by these these dudes plus a bunch of other people that were in the bar nobody got hurt there were no punches thrown but these people charged him with whatever charge applies to you know someone who loses face and this guy was made to pay thirty thousand dollars actually initially i think the fine was two hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand rmb which is the chinese chinese currency uh, equivalent to about thirty thousand um, dollars and having to spend like I don't know maybe his sentence was reduced I can't remember exactly but he went to jail for refusing to go drink with someone because these racist pricks decided that that's the way to go in Korea if you get in a fight clearly you shouldn't but if that's the case most of the time um, you will lose as a foreigner in Korea you will lose the fight in a court if if the the case goes to court for whatever reason if the fight is severe and it's taken down to the police you as a foreigner 
are like 95% likely to lose the whole deal and it will be in favor of the Korean party. This is changing slightly. Uh, the legal system in Korea is a lot more developed, it's still developing and the government is working on that because they need to incorporate a lot more um, uh, laws that are you know, in inclusive of, of foreigners, not only Koreans. So the Korean government is working on that and things are changing. But it seems like in China they're not. So in this case, this guy who refused to drink with these fellas uh, basically caused them to lose face and that was enough for them to charge him and put him in jail. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And so um, in any scuffle, in any fight, from what Serpen AZ said, um, the favors are 100% in the direction of the Chinese. I'm not saying that, you know, getting into fights is a very important aspect of any uh, stay abroad. That's clear, it's not. But people do drink. I personally don't, so I don't really have a problem with that. Yeah, so you know, you, these ladies give out churchy flyers and napkins and stuff. The patriotic propaganda that is like constantly spewed onto the Chinese population causes people to behave like morons and leads them to be excessively backwards in their thinking. Fact alone, the Chinese are so ridiculously um, patriotic. Um, it's preposterous. Any type of patriotism, it's in my mind, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's a form of stupidity. It shows that as an individual, you're unable to think for yourself. You're unable to like accept and recognize other nations or other cultures or other beliefs, forms of beliefs. And you're blindly tied to your own uh, forms of, you know, government or, or beliefs and you think those are, th that they're superior to any other ones. When clearly any present form of government presently in existence is a complete failure. I think with the exception of like Bhutan, which apparently is supposed to be the happiest country on earth. But those are the countries we don't talk about because they're very, very unique. And the other part is, if anybody asks, China still occupies Tibet and they refuse to relinquish the power over the country. They simply refuse. But so, as a traveler, why would you want to go to a country that blatantly uh, occupies another nation and has for many years and blatantly refuses to to relinquish its power over that nation and claims that it's that it's its own province like it's ridiculous isn't it tibet has been an independent country for many years prior to the chinese invasion and unfortunately is no more so to sum up why is korea a much better place to live and visit than china you know for many years i kind of uh, had a problem with the Koreans, many Koreans saying that Chinese were this or Chinese were that. But I'm slowly beginning to lean into that sphere myself. The more I see of Serpent AZ and I understand that he needs to be very um, politically correct when it comes to that. Because otherwise, as I said, he'd be out of his job. Me personally, I don't really have that fear. I guess if the Chinese government got a hold of this video they could probably block it on their on their um, media sources but their media sources are blocked for the most part anyway I don't even know if you can get YouTube in China you certainly can't get Twitter or or Facebook or any other of those social medias why would you want to be living in a country like that again communism is not to be romanticized it's a ridiculous form of oppressive government that brainwashes people into believing that their shit doesn't stink when it clearly smells to high heaven. Koreans uh, have maintained a very soft, subtle form of racism. But over time, uh, with the larger influx of foreigners, uh, tourists and, and workers coming into South Korea, I think South Koreans are slowly becoming accustomed to that. But China, due to its sheer size and uh, oftentimes inaccessible environments uh, tucked away from the main cities that are that may be frequented by foreigners 
you know, its population um, is facing an international crisis, meaning they don't get a chance to hang out with anybody else outside of their own nation. All they see is other Chinese faces. So when they see a strange face, they behave like morons. Some of the videos that Serpent AZ posted, guys will come up to him drunk, try to take pictures of him, try to kiss him. And I'm surprised the guy didn't punch the guy. And I, well, I, I do understand why, because if he had, he'd be in a world of pain. Like he'd be in jail for, for basically fending off a, a harasser. He would be the one to blame because he's a foreigner in the country. It's ridiculous. Don't go to China. Come to Korea. Stay away from that country. Uh, for, for all the reasons that I mentioned, they're nonsense propaganda, the oppressive uh, government, the ridiculous form of patriotism that people are, are bred into, and most of all, the fact that China to this day is still an occupying country, namely that it's occupying Tibet for so many years now, and it refuses to relinquish its control over the country, over the nation. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to invest your money into a nation like that? As a human being, yes, there are companies, they do business, companies are not people, they're heartless. But as a human being, why would you want to go to China? So I say, if you want to go to Asia, pack your bags and come visit Korea. If you want to teach English, pack your bags and come visit, come teach in Korea. Don't go to China. Korean food is fantastic. People are getting used to uh, having foreigners around. Yes, you will encounter the awkward uh, times of Korean awkwardness or, or you will encounter bad people, but you will encounter bad people even back home in your own hometown. Having to have the pressure looming over you of constant fear that you may get in trouble simply for looking different as you would in China. It's too stressful. Who wants that? Forget that. Come to Korea. This should be like a pitch for Korea. Totally. Anywho, uh, today is Tuesday. Uh, it's about 10.30. It's nice and warm, but the air is kind of crabby. Oh, and if you're worried about the air quality oh, in Korea, think about what it would be like in China. As long as you don't come to the capital here, to Seoul, you're, you're okay. It's not great, obviously, but it's not horrible. I mean, if, you, if you're really concerned about air quality, then stay back home, stay in the USA, stay in Canada, because that's where the fresh air is. Germany apparently has a very good air quality while all the other nations around it are suffering, particularly the Eastern European countries. That was a fly. There's a certain type of fly that looks like a wasp and I think a lot of people confuse it as a wasp. And these are the kinds of bugs that hover in the air. Okay, I'm heading back to the hog one because uh, I'm getting steamy in this leather jacket again. Make sure to like, subscribe. If you have beef with what I just said about China, leave a comment in the section below. If you agree, leave a comment in the section below. And most of all, hit that smash backing. What? Smash that like button. That's a pretty sidewalk. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.